You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Today, we are getting started with our first host call of the weekend. So, we've got some great questions here, as always. I'm looking forward to answering them. And especially today, it's, it's a fun one because I get to use functional medicine for the first one. I get to use Ayurvedic medicine for the second. And I get to use my fitness and exercise background for the third. So, you know, this is why I do love to do what I do. And that's because I don't have to specialize in any one particular thing. I can look at health and natural health in general as the conglomeration, the sum of everything that we do in life. And so when you look at it like that, you're better able to help people in general. Like for example, I work with some really hard cases. So right now I'm working with someone who they might potentially have cancer, a soft cancer in the body, more like a lymphoma or a sarcoma or a Hodgkin's-based cancer. And they also, looks like they might have anemia. It looks like they might have blood clots. It looks like they potentially could have a parasite or potentially have lead poisoning. So I look at these things and when I'm shown this type of lab work and I request that they send out for additional labs as well as I start to look deeper into it, I realize that what I have to do is look at this person as a whole human being and not just their lab work because there's so many things that could be going wrong with them right now. I have to put on my detective hat and say, okay, I'm looking at the labs, but now I'm also looking looking at the person and I start to look into the background. What do they do for work? What might they been exposed to in terms of toxins? What are their stress levels like? Do they have a past history? Do they have a family history of cancer? And so I look at all of these particular then things and then I'm better able to guide them on their path to getting well again. And I will share this person's success during the future because although I just started working with them, I have no doubt that they are going to make a full recovery even though right now their health and their prognosis it is dismal, right? It's not a very good outlook when I look at these labs, but I have no doubt that they will get well. And the one reason is this, is I believe that this person will see it through to the end. I believe that they will follow the protocol that I do give them. And I believe that they will get the very best care in terms of conventional medicine and also naturopathic medicine, which is what I'm going to help them with. So, Anyway, pack on to the questions. I don't even know how I got there. All right, so let's get into our first question. The first question is from Erica. Really great. I'm going to read her whole question, and I know that it's a good amount about health history, but this is going to be a case study. You're going to get to see how I would help this person in my practice, how I would give them that first step before I start to look at their labs, because I obviously don't have their labs in front of me. So use this. You know, This is about mood-based disorders, and this is about low thyroid, and this is about autoimmune. It applies to so many people, and and if not you, probably someone you know, all right? So hi, Dr. Ball. Thank you so much for your podcast. It has literally changed my life. I've been taking your daily greens and have grown to love it as part of my daily morning routine. I'm currently in the middle of your seven-day Dr. Ball detox, and I also can't say enough good things about it. The daily nutritional support formula tastes great. Thank you, Erica. We appreciate that. Since being diagnosed with Hashimoto's earlier this year, I've seen two endocrines, meaning endocrine specialists, those are doctors, who weren't a good fit for me and continued to increase my medicine. I ended up with a TSH level starting around seven. So basically, Erica has, just as an little side, she has low thyroid. And so when you have low thyroid, like Hashimoto's, which basically causes low thyroid from autoimmune-based disorder from it attacking her actual thyroid gland. So TSH stands for thyroid 
stimulating hormone. And that the higher that number is, it actually means the worse that your thyroid is working because your TSH is essentially a call for your hypothalamus pituitary gland to tell your thyroid to make more thyroid hormone. And I'll, I'll go through that in a minute. So her levels were starting at seven. Ideally, from a functional medicine perspective, you want them from between 0.5 and 2 or 2.5. That's where you want the level. So when you're at a seven, it's not ideal. Okay. But she's gotten her levels down to about 0.02 to 0.015, et cetera. Now those are actually too low. So her, her thyroid levels are now too low. Okay. So I am 30, super fit, and all my vitals are in line. I eat healthy. I refuse to take my thyroid medication for the rest of my life, especially since over the last two years, it has, it hasn't helped me feel any better. I've started to see a holistic doctor who came highly recommended, who also has an MD. He told me I could stop taking my T3 and T4, which is really what I want to hear, but prescribe me LDN and lithium. With regards to LDN, which is low dose naltrexone, I have done a ton of reading and and I've come taking it. He has me on three milligrams and I'm only starting on half that amount per day so far. What are your thoughts on LDN? With regards to lithium, I am really having a hard time coming in terms of taking it. 90% of what I'm reading online terrifies me. I do not have a bipolar disorder. The doctor I'm seeing tested my lithium levels and they were zero. He feels lithium is a natural thing to take and things like the low dose of lithium is for supplemental purposes. Okay, I'm going to answer your question now. So I have enough. So basically, Erica, as far as I see it, you wrote... I do not have a bipolar disorder. So I'm going to answer the first part because it's easier. So there's a product called lithium orotate. It has good science behind it. And it does help a lot of people with mood-based disorders like obsessive compulsive disorder or addictive-based behaviors. If you don't have that and you had a lab test run and you weren't low on lithium, I don't see a need to take lithium. When we're talking about supplementation, we're taking supplements as exactly the word dictates. We're taking them as a supplement because our bodies were tested low for that, or it would most likely bring us benefit because we're not getting enough from our nutrition, right? So would I take lithium? Well, you know, here's the thing. I don't have a lot of issues with taking lithium, especially for a short period of time. Now, if lithium is going to work for you, you'll typically see it work within a week. So that's a nice little trial, right? Of course, you can't take anything else new. You have to do that and only that for that week. Are you getting the benefit from it? And of course, you take lithium orotate. It's the best form to take. It has the most science behind it. And again, but that's for mood-based issues. And also, I don't know, maybe once in, I don't know, five years, we'll say, have I ever recommended lithium? And the reason is this. I always go for several serotonin-based issues first. I always go for adrenal-based issues first, for thyroid-based issues first. The thing that could be blocking your serotonin, that's what I'm looking for because a lot of people with mood-based issues, it's a serotonin issue. So I'm looking at B vitamins and that's what my thoughts for you are. We might want to start looking at a better B vitamin if there are those mood-based things. But anyway, let's get away from the whole mood thing because you seem to be doing fine in that department. If you were having mood-based disorders, I would look again to other items first, which is like Things like ashwagandha, rhodiola, B vitamins, vitamin C. Then I would look to maybe other things if we needed like GABA, L-tryptophan, maybe some 5-HTP, you know, things like that. Okay. So let's talk about thyroid because I know so many people have thyroid-based issues. Well, if your levels, if they're 0.02 and 0.015, you absolutely do not need to be taking thyroid medication. But again, you're going to want to work with your PCP or the doctor you're currently working with and not just take my direct recommendation because I'm not working with you in my practice. However, those numbers signify that you are basically not even asking your body to produce more thyroid because you're good at whatever you're taking right now. So what does that mean? Don't stop both T3 and T4 medication at the same time. Again, in my opinion, I'm giving you my opinion, which is what this, these house calls are all about. If you're my practice, I would say work with your PCP work with whoever you're working with who's prescribing those medications to wean off one at a time and then wean off of the other. So if you can wean off of the T4 and just take the T3 or vice versa, great. You're still doing well, great. Make sure you're testing your levels every three months at the maximum. So, but what else would I do? Well, if you're doing this well, and everything's under control, do you need low-dose naltrexone? Now, for those who don't know what low-dose naltrexone is, it can actually be a beneficial thing for some people with autoimmune-based issues as you're getting your body better. So low-dose naltrexone 
actually helps balance the immune system. So what it does, and typically, again, you're going to be taking this at bedtime, which I'm sure you were given as a recommendation. It helps attach essentially to opioid receptors in the brain and also immune cells. So it helps balance Th1, Th2 immunity. It helps with uh, macrophages, helps with natural killer cell production, helps with T and B cells and other immune cells that are what essentially regulate the body's immune system. And so one of the big things with Hashimoto's is, is that is an autoimmune-based issue that's attacking the thyroid. So my recommendation for you specifically, I know I'm going on long about this, but is you need to really heal the gut. You need to make sure that you're keeping gluten, that you're keeping dairy and a lot of those things out of your diet, that you're still on an autoimmune-based, nutrition-based protocol, that you are doing the all-in-one, that you're doing the greens. But also, if you don't have any bloating, any issues like that, start to use things like glutamine and zinc carnosine. You can look into our protocol for a leaky gut. And again, you can find that right on the website as well. And that's going to rebuild that gut wall so that you're not going to have the reactivity in the future. And then besides that, what I would recommend is using things that contain selenium and iodine. Selenium and iodine, which again, you're probably using, are going to boost your natural thyroid ability. So selenium is going to help with the enzymatic transformations. Iodine is going to actually give you the natural raw material that you need. That's typically what I do in my practice and it works phenomenally well. We get people off thyroid medication all the time. We really do. It's Hashimoto's is not something that you need to live with for the rest of your life. Now, is is it kind of hanging out in the background? Could it come about? Sure, but that's just basically what your body's susceptible to. It doesn't mean that you have to live with it. It just means that you have to be wary of it. That's all. I mean, I have a bunch of things that I need to be wary of, you know, and, and they've I've had them in the past and they're there. But anyway, Eric, I hopefully that answers your question. And at least I gave you, I think, a place to start with the selenium and the iodine for sure. Make sure you're getting yourself tested every eight to 12 weeks just to look at those levels. You won't need to do this forever, just for the next six months or so. And you only use LDN and you only use lithium if you actually need them, right? So you're starting off um, doing the right thing, very low dose if you're starting anyways. Okay, let's move on. I I think I gave that question a good amount of time. All right. Tongue diagnosis. Oh, this is a nice short one. Great. So we got emailed in actually from Phyllis. Phyllis is asking... Hopefully that's how we pronounce that. She's like, I love your tongue diagnosis episode. So we appreciate that. What does it mean when I create a lot of saliva in my mouth? And so this is a great question because I've actually gotten this a few times, but she just came in with, what does it mean if I'm producing all this saliva, like excess saliva in the mouth? So this is interesting. So this can be a few different things. And I want to go through this very, very quickly, but succinctly as well. The first thing you need to look at is mucus producing foods. When are you producing this great amount of mucus? Is it after a meal, like within 20 minutes, or is it when you wake up in the morning? You know, when are you producing this excess mucus? So you have to think about why is mucus being produced in the first place? So some things like dairy in general. So this is a big thing. First, eliminate dairy, just dairy in all of its forms, especially cold dairy. I used to drink milk at every meal growing up. And that's because my parents were told, drink milk, healthy bones, healthy, strong body. Well, that's absolutely not true. That is absolute propaganda from the dairy industry, and it may be really sick as a kid, especially someone who's prone to producing lots and lots of mucus. Ear, nose, and throat issues were like, it's just a part of my life forever until I eliminated that around 23, 24 years old. And my life literally changed once I started doing that as well. So there are other things that can produce it because mucus is produced when your body needs a protective coating around it. So mucus is produced in nature. Like if a fish washes up on the beach, it's going to create a mucus layer around its body that's going to help seal in that moisture. It's going to help to protect it against the external environment. Mucus is produced in our intestines as part of an inflammatory rebound effect as well. So I would run a food sensitivity test. We have an amazing food sensitivity test that we do at our wellness center that we literally offer to everyone pretty much all over the world. You can purchase that at stephencabral.com forward slash store. It is the absolute best price that you possibly get it for. You get my recommendations and you get a call with a health coach. It's, I mean, literally, this is our way of being able to work with more people. So if you can afford that, of course, I recommend that because you're going to get actual data on 94 foods and they're healthy foods, right? But they're not necessarily healthy for you. So I would check that out. Now, that's mainly around foods. There is another possibility that your body is in more of what's called the parasympathetic nervous system. So this is actually a healing process, typically only brought about on a longer term scale or larger scale when your body is dealing with a real health crisis or healing type property. So it's seen greater in what's called the Kapha body type. 
And it's seen in the other body types when they're going through a healing process. The body produces more mucus in the nose, more mucus in the mouth, and more mucus overall in your intestines. So you might even see your stool coated with a little bit of mucus as well. And so that you want to look into deeper issues of what's going on in the body. Are you suffering from other things, meaning like autoimmune-based, digestive-based? And I would look into that. So an organic acid test is really more of a digestive-based function. That's a great one to look at as well. So Phyllis, hopefully that answered your question as well. All right, Giovanni is up next. Giovanni, oh, this is a great question. I remember this one coming in. Really like this question too. So Giovanni wrote, I love to run, but heard you say it's bad for me. Should I stop completely? I want to lose weight, but can't afford to join a gym and running seems like an easy thing for me to do every day to lose weight. Please help. Thank you. Thanks you. Okay. So great question as well. And I'm happy to answer this. I want you to know this, that very rarely, like, is there a type of exercise that I will just say, oh, that's bad for you and never do it. Like, that's not it at all. If you listen to my Friday review, check out yesterday's show if you didn't check that out. I talk about the principles of traditional Chinese medicine and how all we're trying to do is keep the body balanced at all times. There's a reason why my nutritional line, my nutritional supplement line is called equilibrium, right? Equilibrium nutrition. And it is because we're trying to Balance the body. The body stays healthy. The body maintains a great weight and the body lives a long time if it is in equilibrium. Every book I read, really, as I was going through my own health process and as I was going through my own education, not from, well, even textbooks as well, talked about equilibrium, creating this thing called dynamic equilibrium in the body. This thing called dynamic equilibrium, I'll talk about it more in depth in the future, is your body always at Every nanosecond during the day, trying to rewrite itself, trying to, if you put in that, you know, that Coca Cola or a Pepsi or soda, it's so acidic that your body is literally pulling minerals from your bones, minerals from your muscles, all these different things to balance the acidity of that cola. Because when it hits your bloodstream and gets into your blood, it needs minerals to keep your blood at that 7.356 pH that it needs for optimal health, right? So it just doesn't do that on its own. It robs this area to give a little bit to this area. That's called dynamic equilibrium. So, Giovanni, I know that's kind of really off topic from running, but it's really not. So, when I talk about it for running, I'm talking about, well, if you want to lose weight, running is just not the most efficient way to do that. You know, simply put, running can be very catabolic, which means it can burn off muscle tissue and it can actually store or hold on to body fat. It can do this for multiple reasons. One, is that you can go too long, too far, too hard, and you can actually use up what your body needs in, in terms of essentially sugar. It goes deep into the process, and, and I'll go a little bit. I wasn't going to, but I'll go a little bit into it right now. So when your body gets into more of a catabolic state, what happens is your body needs a faster fuel source to use, and it can't oxidize body fat at that rate. So meaning like to really burn body fat while you're doing cardio, you actually need to go at a lower pace. Uh, And I know that seems really odd, but the lower pace you are, the greater percentage of body fat. Now, if you do interval training, it's for a shorter period of time. And what we're really looking at is for the body fat burn to be after the workout, not during the workout, but too many people looking for it through cardio during the workout. It's inefficient at best. The other reason why I talked negatively about running in the past is that it actually creates micro tears in the heart. And they've seen this with marathon runners. They, They see why marathon runners are often dying at a much younger age. So I can't recommend it in terms of health and overall, but you know, here's the thing. I never talk badly about it. I talk bad about it in terms of if it's all you do and if it's at a much longer pace. Like if you go out for, you know, a 5k, a 3.1 mile run or so, there's no problem with that. I mean, I have no issues with that whatsoever. I'm talking more about like long distance training, one hour of running or longer. That's my real issue. And also I want people to stay balanced. You can't run every day. That's not great for your joints. It's not right, great for your whole body if you want to be doing this for the rest of your life. So I'm always looking at, okay, what's this look like long term? I need you doing two to three resistance training days per week to keep your muscles strong, to keep your bones strong, to prevent sarcopenia, to make sure that your metabolism stays boosted, all the things that running aren't going to give you. But could you do running another two or three days? Absolutely. If that's what you love to do, why not do that on like a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and do your weight training on like a, a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, take Sundays off. That 
could be totally fine as long as you're not overdoing it. I think that will work great. So Giovanni, it's not for me to really tell you what's good or bad. Oh, I should say that I do. But it's to say like excess, excess running is when it's not good. That's how I want you to look at it. And you can absolutely do it. But also if you're trying to lose weight, it's just not efficient. You need to be doing those two to three days of, I would say resistance training and combine that with high intensity interval training or just some interval training like we do. I'm telling you, we've been doing this now for over a decade at my two studios. We have more success stories than really anyone. I don't say that from an ego standpoint. It's just, I looked into everything and I said, what's working best? Now, is there actual science behind it? Yes. Okay. This is what we're going to do. And we're going to do it with thousands of people. And then we're going to fine tune it. And now we have over 150,000 actual appointments completed. We have so much data. If you can do a couple days of resistance training, a couple days of either biking or intervals or running, you're going to be golden. You don't need to exercise to excess. Use your nutrition, use your exercise. You're going to have the best of all worlds possible. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to another host call. Again, like really appreciate the questions that come in, and, and I enjoy answering them. I really do love being able to give back, just kind of talk from my experience. So if you ever have a question of your own, feel free to just go to stephencabral.com forward slash askabral. Take care, everyone. Before you go, I wanted to share a personal story with you. The real reason I began to get well finally is because I figured out what was wrong with me. And that might seem pretty obvious, but I went from doctor to doctor for over two years before discovering at-home functional medicine lab testing. These are the labs that enabled me to finally figure out what was wrong with my hormones, blood sugar, electrolytes, and gut health. And once I knew what was wrong, I could then follow a proven plan in order to rebalance my body from the inside out. This is why I believe so strongly in functional medicine lab testing and why I've made it my mission to share these labs with the world. Now at equa.life, you can order an at-home lab test or a lab bundle for you and your family and be able to complete it within the week. Plus, the Equal Life difference is that you're not left to try to read and figure out these labs on your own. We explain what your lab numbers mean, what they mean in the much bigger picture, and then how to go about rebalancing your body in order to heal. To see our full selection of lab tests or to set up a free lab selection call to find out what labs may be best for you, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. And do remember, we ship these all over the world. To find out more and to set up your free lab selection call, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash labs.